Alrighty, just a few goodies. Bowler transmission, Tremec T56 Magnum, quick time bell housing, some goodies from Speedway, buddies at Detroit Speed, and a few other odds and sods. Let's get this unloaded and we'll take a look. Congratulations! <laughs> Your attention spans longer than the average TikTok viewer. Welcome, Ken, Paradise Bay Customs. So why did I open with a clip of my truck full of car parts? To make a point. You know that building a car requires a lot of skills, like cutting, grinding, and welding. But you're also gonna need to know how your car goes together. And if you wanna work smarter and not harder, you're gonna have to do your research and planning to avoid screw ups. A big part of planning is knowing what parts you need when to buy them, and how to manage costs. Or better yet, save some money. The last thing you need is to suffer the impacts of bad decisions. Everyone hates chasing things when parts don't work or fit. Why? Because that costs money and time. The goal is to keep your build moving. In other words, buy smart. Okay, no boring unboxing video. All build action today, but with a twist. The floor assembly will be rolling back under the 67. I'm gonna knock off a few touch points that can't be put off any longer. And you'll see how all those goodies play into what I need to do. More importantly, stick around to the end. I'm gonna share my top three tips on how to buy smart, a strategy that has saved me thousands of dollars on my build so far. Let's go, it's gonna be a good one. Let's go! Let's go. With all the Quadrilink components welded in, I went ahead and reinstalled the GearFX axle housing. This time, <laughs> right side up. Now I need to locate and weld these shock mounts to the cross member and install these JRI single adjustable coilover shocks. So I know the axle housing is all squared up. I shared how in this video. I could simply plumb the shocks up to the cross member and locate the tabs. But as I'm fond of saying, validation is key in my brain. So that's why I bought this wheel fitment tool from Speedway Motors. Confused? Here, I'll show you. What better way to validate the location of the axle housing, front to back, than to ensure that these lovely 325s are centered in the wheel openings. Passenger side looks good. Let's flip the tire around to the other side. As does the driver's side. No adjustment needed to the swivel links, as far as I can tell, at least for this purpose. With the floor assembly in, everything is looking really good. Very pleased. Next step is to address the transmission hump at the firewall. Although I committed to the Tremec about a year ago, when I raised the transmission tunnel, I didn't buy it. I relied on research at the time to ensure I'd have enough flexibility with the additional two inches in height. But the hump, especially where it ties into the firewall, is a finish detail, a custom finish detail. You're gonna see it from the engine compartment, so it has to be bang on. From a design perspective, I knew I would need the bell housing to properly inform the design, but I didn't stop there. I also purchased the tranny, the clutch, even the cross member, all from Bowler Performance Transmissions. Why? We'll get into those details a little later, but it's a great segue to tip number one. Don't think of parts as one-off components. Understand how things go together. Problem areas are usually where things come together. It's here, you'll see your mistakes if you made them. Things won't fit. You gotta flush these details out ahead of time. But these touch points also present some great opportunities too. If 
you're open to them. Like at the torque boxes, or the rocker panels, or now at the firewall. So does the bell housing alone give me enough to finalize the hump? Nope. So I need to know with confidence the location of the bell housing, front to back, left to right, up and down, the height, right? And then also the drive angle. How do you do that? I decided to get this LS dummy block from Speedway Motors. I don't want to buy my motor yet, and this is a lot easier to work with. I also picked up LS motor mounts from Detroit Speed for their subframe, so I can mount the dummy block. Bolt up the bell housing. I even got these beautiful DSC headers to flush out potential interferences at the kick panels. That's another great segue. This time, tip number two. Some decisions you need to make early because they're foundational. They set the direction of your build and they drive other decisions. In my case, I knew I wanted a mini tub car with modern suspension and chassis, and I bought everything early on to feed into the floor assembly workflow. Other decisions, you can let percolate, as I'm fond of saying, and keep your options open. Car builds are long projects. Your vision will evolve over time. I know mine has. Everybody wants to save money, me too. But there's more to parts than just costs. And that brings us to tip number three. Don't think of parts just in terms of purchase price. Time is a cost too, whether you're paying a shop or doing the work yourself. Value, on the other hand, is cost, time, quality, durability, perhaps even made in America or support local. Whatever makes up your value equation, even happiness. You can't discount smiles per gallon. You gotta factor it all in. The cheapest part isn't necessarily the best value. Let's put the strategy in context and give you a couple examples. When I started to tear into my car, it was painfully obvious the bottom half was rotten. I took stock and determined what I needed. Tear down complete, sheet metal in hand, build in motion, check. While working on the rockers, I started my research and looked at all the aftermarket solutions. I figured out what I wanted from a suspension and chassis system, I weighed the pros and cons of all the manufacturers and options, and I made a best value decision. No secret, I went with Detroit Speed. I shared my reasons at the time in this video. I'm planning a follow-up, a lessons learned video. Will my recommendation stand? Subscribe so you don't miss it. Where do you get content like this? Timing is everything. I plan all my purchases well in advance. I know what I need, and what I plan on purchasing at least six months to a year in advance. Time affords you the opportunity to watch the market. You know what's available, you can manage long lead times and supply chain issues. But more importantly, being in a position ready to pull the trigger enables you to take advantage of a sale. I know that might sound crazy, but a 10% savings on a $15 part, eh but a 10% savings on a $15,000 system. Now we're talking. Sounds simple, but I saved a little over two grand US on my Detroit Speed order alone because I knew what I wanted, I was ready to buy, and was on the lookout for a deal. The front subframe alone is $2,000 more expensive now than it was back in 2020 when I bought it during a Black Friday sale. Let's do another example. I started and stopped the custom firewall over a year ago. I took the work as far as I could at the time, but I still needed to flush out a bunch of decisions and parts. I had plenty of time and other things to work on. We touched on the hump, but other decisions needed to be finalized. Like this I did it steering column and mount, the clutch master and mount, and now with the transmission here, I can validate my assumptions on the tunnel and even finalize the shifter location. In terms of saving money, the stuff from Speedway came up on sale, pulled the trigger. Figured I only needed the bell housing now, but when Tremec announced a price increase coming, I pulled the trigger on the complete system. Put that in the cost avoidance category. The benefits of working with a trusted supplier like Bowler, I was able to coordinate all the touch points with my DSC setup. When you're buying a complete system, most give you better pricing than one-off components. And you can negotiate. Why were all those parts in the back of my truck? Well, 
I live in Winnipeg, Canada and get slammed with currency exchange, taxes and shipping costs. Another way I save big bucks is to capitalize on free US shipping and have my stuff delivered to a parcel service an hour south of here in Pembina, North Dakota. I started buying this haul back in November and December, but didn't pick the stuff up until February. That cross-border run probably saved me another grand in shipping costs and brokerage fees. Okay, transmission hump and firewall time. If you want to check out how I got to this point, watch one of those videos. Time to get busy. Cheers.